Uh, my name is Catherine Kokindolo. I am a businesswoman. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a friend. And yeah, my core profession is administration. Um, I used to work as an administrator and a facilities um, manager. And uh, that is before I transitioned back into, I transitioned into rather um, business. Uh, I run a cleaning and landscaping and fumigation business that entails cleaning of offices or homes, um, cleaning of carpet seats, um, you name it. We literally clean everything, post-construction cleaning. Um, if you want to uh, go, to, go into a house and you're like, oh, you know, we want to clean this house professionally before we go in, we call that preoccupancy cleaning. So we also do that. We fumigate against all, you know, unwanted visitors to your home. And we also do landscaping. Uh, for me, I think it was just the default, let me say like the natural setting. I used to be an administrator, the place I used to work in, and I used to be in charge of cleaners, uh, uh, security, and basically just managing the office and that kind of work. So when I decided to leave and venture into a business, it felt like that was my natural setting because I had understood uh, in a nutshell how to do, because I was really managing them closely because I was working in a big facility and there was a lot of detail that was going on. So when I was ready, Really, okay, was I really ready? I just, when I decided to quit employment or when I was planning to quit employment and I was doing my research, I felt like cleaning would became, became more easier for me to do. So that's how I navigated into cleaning. And I realized the minute I started cleaning, I figured, oh, people are asking for me fumigation. I went online and studied how is this thing done. I got some, you know, skills and I also started doing fumigation. Landscaping was so by default because, again, in the facility I used to work in, it was quite a large facility. We had gone into a place that was literally a bush, and I saw the place in actually a semi-arid, arid, semi-arid area in Kenya. And I, you know, we literally scrapped everything and planted trees and flowers, and the place became beautiful. So I was like, if I can turn such a facility from nothing to a beautiful place, then it also became something I thought, well, I could consider doing it. And yeah, now three years in is what we do. So cleaning is what it is. I'm sure all of us, if you live in, in a house or you, um, yeah, if you live in a house, you definitely do clean dishes, bed sheets, your house, you know, and there are always stains. When you stay in a house for such a long time, there will be some things like the toilet have stains. So those, that is the general cleaning for a house. If you're in an office, obviously you won't not stay in an office that is not clean. Where there are people, cleaning is default. Where there are many people around, cleaning is default. Well, it, when it comes to fumigation, there are things like flies or um, bed bugs or cockroaches. These are animals or insects that just come and navigate where human beings live. So when you have them in your home, that's when we come and fumigate. So what we do, like fumigation we get we buy um, a pro, um, an insecticide that will you know kill the insect in your home be it a cockroach or flies or even ants whatever it is who come spray or you know there's even it's pretty much simple you get you buy the dawa there are some instructions in there we follow them but we have people who do the job I, I I'm not the one who I, I work with a team of people who do the job the earlier days when I started the business um, to be honest, you start without knowing. Yes, I thought I knew, I mean, I've managed cleaners, I've managed gardeners, I've managed a facility. So that's the knowledge that you're living with. But when you come to the real thing, you realize there's a lot more than you know than you expected so the earlier days were full of confusion to be honest and a lot of doubt also because it's something new that you're doing it's your thing and so there was a lot of trial and error and there was a lot of second guessing yourself of course a lot of mistakes you know there are, i remember there's a time we went to wash a floor in an in an office and we used the wrong product we almost ruined the the floor and so as we go on we just you know you learn so it's not something you wake up knowing there's a lot of learning that you have to do online and just educate yourself because i mean i've never been to a cleaning classroom but thank god for google and youtube university those are the places where we get into and learn how do we do these things so earlier days it was challenging you get one job, another one after one month, another one after two weeks. It was not as consistent, but you know, we kept at it. I think social media is such a powerful tool uh, in, the, in this day and era because um, 
sometimes you may not even have the contacts of the people you know, but you are friends with them on Facebook or Instagram or these other social media flat platforms. So sometimes we leverage on that. I go onto my own personal um, Instagram account, for example, or Facebook, and put a poster out there that I'm cleaning sofas and carpets, probably at a discounted price. And you know, people who are like, oh, uh, Catherine does this, you know, they go ahead and contact me and you, and, and, you know, you, you get business. So it has played quite a key role, to be honest. I, or even WhatsApp stories, for example, people that you know and they were not quite sure where you went. In fact, most of the business I get from is from people I know. They are mostly my contacts, people I work with or somebody I have their number. And it's just because they see you, you know, posting a WhatsApp story about cleaning an office. They call you and they're like, oh, do you do this? Or please come and clean my office or come and fumigate my house against this insect. And that's how we go. So. I mean, if you don't have a social media now, then you're really missing when it comes to business. It's very critical, I'd say. I think YouTube and Google University is the best way to learn because we are not now limited to our local material. When you get online, the world is vast. The world has become one village, you know. So we are able to learn. You go and type cleaning technologies. They come, all of them. It's You can't not not know unless you really do not do not want to learn. So that's I found that is the best way to see. And also when I walk into facilities or areas, I am very observant to see what kind of machines are they using when they're cleaning. When I go to the toilet, how is their dispenser working? such things so you also are learning through observation and when you see something useful or something you'd want to employ I get a contact or I inquire where can I get this where did you buy it from and then you know you are continually continually just learning from the environment but more importantly from YouTube and and Google I think our core strength is customer satisfaction uh, my team knows that if my customer our customer is not our client is not satisfied we will go back and repeat that job at no cost so that has set us aside i will always follow up with feedback from my client how was the job done you know and they will be like oh this was not done nicely or maybe this one you know there's a bit of stain here we'll be like when can we come back and do the job at no cost so we, even with my workers we, we, in the team we know that if we are to go out, we have to do an excellent job because I will call on you to do the job again if you've not done a good job. At not pay because the customer will not agree the customer to pay again. So I think that is our core strength and our value that it is important for us, our customers are satisfied. And I believe a satisfied customer will definitely spread the word. It becomes a very easy marketing tool for the business. For all the facilities that we are in, we have to do um, random pre-site visits. Personally, I will go to all visits, uh, all sites that we are occupying at least once a month. Why? To just randomly first do con quality control. Are they, from even the way the cleaner looks, are they well dressed? Are they uh, decent? Have they cleaned the toilets to the standards? There's already a supervisor that does that, but just for my own knowledge. But when again I go to the site, I will definitely go to the office and connect with the person who's given us business because it is important to give, keep the, relation, the, the relationship close forever, even to make sure that if there's a complaint, they can easily come to you, or if there's a situation, the lines are always open. If I cannot visit, I call. There's a schedule that I'm, I follow once a week. Have you visited this site or have you called this site to just engage and find out how we do or how, how is everything going just a simple thing like that you hear oh by the yesterday we were even thinking um, you know do you do this or we noticed this about um, your uh, your one of your workers so keeping the line open has helped us to keep in touch and to maintain a close relationship What we do is we make sure that we purchase and use products that are eco-friendly, products that are even human friendly and uh, facility friendly. As I said, you can use a corrosive uh, product to the wrong to, to the wrong floor, and that you know will bring damage. And we try to avoid that. But also, especially when it comes to 
landscaping. Personally, when we do, because we deal with uh, plants and grass and such, vegetation, we call it vegetation um, um, waste, we, we outsource a person who will get the waste from us. So let's say we are working in a facility and we've cut a few branches in a tree or there was a lot of grass that needed to be taken care of of plants. What we do is we ensure that we have outsourced a professional disposing company so that we don't burn the product in the facility. As you know, burning of vegetation, you're polluting the air and that is not eco-friendly. So we ensure that we release that load to somebody else who can do it professionally, then they can handle that. Because even in Kenya, there's context on how to manage waste and there are certificates that you need to get for that. So we don't get so much into management of waste, but we ensure the much we can do is we ensure that our team is well equipped and using the right products that are eco-friendly and that they, it does not bring any hazards to them. What we do with our team is once we recruit them, we will train them and we have material that we have uh, uh, gotten online. There are many online, Udemy is one of them. They do teach us anything, including how to clean. So such materials is the material that we expose them to. But most people in the industry have experience. Sometimes we end up hiring somebody who, you know, has five years or eight years experience in cleaning. They even come with new ideas that they saw probably where they were working before. So because we are continually growing, those are things that we are learning along the way. But but we are open. Everybody who comes on board, any, every person we recruit is at least there's a two-day training and we have material that we use from online where we just train them the basics so we are sure that when we deploy somebody, they are doing the right thing in the facility. I also want to touch a bit about home science. I have realized uh, the millennials, we did home science in our upbringing or rather back in our primary school and some of the things that we have to clean, a simple thing like stain removal in a sink, you won't believe but that is in a home science primary school uh, book and you, you advance and we forget these things but I've realized this knowledge was already knowledge that we were given. Simple things like sometimes somebody can call us to their house and say I want you to do proper cleaning of the carpet, remove these things including ironing and washing clothes. We'll not refuse because that's the business of cleaning. So how do you iron? It's something we learned in school. How we collect uh, feedback from our customers is we have a Google document form that we immediately send back to our customer via WhatsApp or email so that they can give us uh, instant or immediate feedback. Besides that, we can also call and follow up or even text, but there's a mechanism where there is even data. I can say of all the 100 places I cleaned last year, what did people see? So it's very easy for us to know this is our strength point. Most people say your customer service is good. Another, they would correct us that maybe, you know, um, uh, just a slight mistake like lack of communication, maybe about time. That is how we collect that and we realize, okay, these are the areas we need improvement and these are the areas you are doing well, well in. So we have a Google document that we send back immediately to the customer and ask how was our service. And most of them are gracious to give us feedback immediately. Then we can review with the, with the team and see how our performance is doing. Um, I think diligence and adaptability is our core value and personally my core value. I've realized every client comes with their own needs. Yes, it might be just a landscaping and a fumigation business in, in, this, in, this, in this school or in this facility. And then the same pa and another person, customer calls you for the same job. But because they're different clients, they all come with their different needs and expectations. So what we do is we ensure that we are very flexible and adaptable. I thought I was authoritarian, <laughs> I think I still am, but uh, it has changed a bit because when it is now your business and your everything, you set the mood and the tone and the culture of your business. I don't think I'm happy to show up in a facility and my cleaners are acting, they were busy and you know, I, I would not want to carry around um, the fear leadership kind of style, but again, there's a place to, to, to to strike a balance. I think when I was employed, I was a bit quite authoritative, but when I started running my own business, I realized there's a place for being authoritative and there's a place for being easy and easy going and a bit laid back. There are things that will require stern discipline and there are things that will require, you know, a verbal warning and just talking through. I mean, there's a lot of coaching and a lot of uh, mentoring when it comes to your own business. You'll go on site and realize people are behaving a certain way. You're trying to maintain the culture of who you are and what the business is. That is the point where you call them for a short meeting and and educate them and coach them in this situation this is how we we, we carry ourselves my very first landscaping job was um, 
by a friend of mine who called me and told me, I see you advertise for landscaping. Are you able to do that? So I said, because this is the business I want to get myself, of course I can. And I mean, I have a background. I've, I've managed a 20-acre facility and I know the dynamics and the uh, you know how to run around it. I said, yes, we do. And she said, okay, there's this facility. Can we do a site visit? We went, did site visit, and I realized, is this a job that I can really do? Now, as I said, I know the skills, I know how to manage, but I said, I can't let this job go because when will you ever do your first job? So I said, let me pick it up. But I realized I do, there's a skill I don't have. There's a workforce that I do not have yet. So I went online, to be honest, I looked for a partner online. Men are very confident. We are not, it's not like women. As we count every coin, if a flower costs 50 shillings, we only put reasonable margins. You know, we'll say, um, maybe 70 shillings because there are other costs that you might not anticipate so that you're not caught off guard. But men will tell you, quote that flower at 200 shillings and you're like, but it cost maybe 50 bob. But you know, I, in me, something kept on telling, just trust this guy. And I anyway, I trusted him and I did the quotation as he had, as, as we were talking and because he was leading more on the, what is the cost of this? I know I have a background knowledge, but he's the guy who's telling me he does it literally every day. So I would go with what he advised me. I went with him. To be honest, when we started doing the job, it ended up costing more days than we had anticipated. We thought it would take three days. It took about five days. Uh, we had anticipated we would use grass for, let's say, 40,000. The grass ended up being for 100,000. So I just kept on feeling if I had not taken a risk to involve someone, would be the, my biggest mistake. And so I can't say there's a way of balancing all this, but I, I think the mantra I go with is be present. I know when I need to be home to parent and I'll be home to parent. There's sometimes that my job might require me to get home late. I will, I will do that because what can you do? You must be, you're the breadwinner. You must still do this thing. But being self-employed also, there's a joy. I don't have to, there's no way I'm waking up early to go. If I wake up early, at five, four, whatever it is. It's my hour preparation. I just sit, I study or read books to do with business or plan my businesses and that's it. But I'm there, I will wake up my son, bathe him and take him to school and go pick him if I'm at home. So the flexibility that also comes with employment, with self-employment or running your own business is quite huge. And for me, I keep saying every mother should be a, a business owner because it comes with a lot of flexibility. People who are employed are in the office by eight. They are living the same time they are living with their kids. They might leave that office at eight. Their kids came home, were fed by other people. They probably slept because tomorrow is school day and their mom will come and find their kids to bed. So it's a, you just have to be deliberate and be present.